Hello, and welcome to the video build series for this table that you see upside down behind me. Now, this video is gonna be a little bit different than normal because it's gonna be structured more like our plans, only albeit for a piece that's a little more simple or I guess more DIY than our normal plans are. But without getting too much into that, let's talk about this piece. So this one's gonna be called the general specific dining table. And the reason that I called it that is because it's based off of these legs. Well, actually not these legs, these are just prototypes. But anyway, it's based off of these legs that I worked with a company called Semi-Exact to create. So Semi-Exact, General Specific, both oxymorons, and yeah, that's the name. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk more about that, but I don't wanna get bogged down just yet. All right, so before we get into it, just a few things that I wanna mention. Mainly, in addition to this video, we've got a downloadable PDF on our website that you can get that has some written instructions and more dimensional drawings that'll help you get through the build. So in those drawings, you may notice at times that the dimensions that we talk about in the video might not reflect what's in the drawing. And beyond that, there's probably gonna be times that your dimensions are gonna differ from both the video and the drawing. And that's fine. That's honestly the reality of building things. There's variations. That said, the main takeaway there is don't just blindly go off of numbers that we give and instead reference your own project to make sure that you get the best result possible. And we'll try to point out those times as we go along. Also, as we work our way through the build, I'm generally gonna do things the most simplistic way that I can, and then I'll present options or alternatives. But regardless of what you choose to do, make sure that you're comfortable around your tools and that you understand how they work. And if you ever feel uncomfortable with a particular cut, don't do it, find an alternative. Now, normally I would have said, if you're uncomfortable, contact me, but those are for our plans that we sell tens of, and this is for a YouTube video that Hopefully it'll get viewed thousands of times, tens of thousands even. So I guess don't contact me, I can't keep up with that. And instead I'll say, Google it. All right, let's get into the build. For the version of the table that I'm gonna be building in this video, in terms of wood, all you'll need is one sheet of four by eight by three quarter inch thick plywood and any species would do, but I'm gonna be using Baltic birch. And that's gonna give us a finished table that's about 90 inches long, 38 and a half inches wide, and about 29 and a half inches tall. And by the way, in our real plans, we give dimensions in both imperial and metric, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna stick with strictly imperial. So sorry, I guess, rest of the world. Anyway, then in addition to that, obviously you would need something for legs, and we're using the legs that I worked with Semi-Exact to design, but you could certainly make your own or use hairpin legs. Just know that the dimensions might vary. Then in terms of tools, the absolute minimum that you would need would be a circular saw, a drill, and a sander. But in the video, I'm also gonna use a router, some clamps, and some other specific tools just to demonstrate some faster ways, but all that stuff is optional. All right, so I guess go grab your materials and then I'll meet you in the next chapter. In this chapter, we're gonna start breaking our plywood down into what's gonna become the finished top. So let's start by talking about how the top is gonna to come together, and then we'll talk about the best way to do this order of operations to get the best result. So I suppose if you wanted to build this table the easiest way possible, you could just get two pieces of plywood, glue and or screw them together, attach the legs, and then call it a day. But we wanna do it using only one sheet of plywood. So if we look at the top from the underside, you can see that we're gonna start with one large top piece. Then we're gonna have four perimeter pieces that'll give the top a thicker look. Then we'll have these two sort of support pieces, I call them belly pieces later in the plan, that are gonna be there to help prevent the table from sagging. And then finally, each leg's gonna get a little support block that'll make the table the right finished height. Now, because we're all probably using different plywood and we're all gonna end up building this a little bit different, note that your piece might sag a little bit in the center. Mine does ever so slightly, but honestly, it's pretty sturdy. And honestly, I guess that's just one of the downsides to trying to stretch one piece of plywood as far as you can take it. So if you're concerned about that at all, I would say either use more wood to help reinforce things or just make the table a little bit smaller and Either one of those or a combination of the two is gonna help to get you there. That said, again, I made my table as big as I could possibly make it and it's pretty sturdy. 
Okay, so anyway, in this drawing here, you can see our pieces of plywood with the pieces nested in it, as well as an underside view of the assembled tabletop. So I'm gonna quickly color code everything so that you can get a rough idea of where each piece is gonna come from. And in terms of the order of operations, what you should do is start by cross cutting this section so that we're left with a 90 by 48 inch chunk. Then from that, we're gonna rip three strips at two inches wide, then one strip at three inches wide, and whatever we're left with is gonna be our top. Okay, now let's get ourselves set up, throw a piece of plywood on the table, and start cutting things. So the first cut that you wanna make is removing the factory edge from one end of your panel. And to do this, you're gonna to wanna to use something with a straight edge. Now, I'm using one of these straight edge guides that said a piece of plywood with a couple of clamps would work just as well. Anyway, I'm gonna set it up so that I know it's perpendicular with the long edge of my plywood and remove my factory edge or as much as I need to so that my piece looks clean at the perimeter. And where you place your straight edge guide is gonna to have to do with your circular saw. But for me, the blade is about three and a half inches from the edge of the base plate. So after making that first cut, what I'm gonna do is measure from my edge guide that I had set up to where the actual cut happened. And then moving forward, I'm gonna use that distance for any calculations, and it's gonna be more accurate than trying to measure the distance from your blade to your base plate. That said, they should be pretty close, so the difference would be marginal, and I'm gonna use three and a half going forward. Next, I'm gonna measure and mark 90 inches from the edge that we just cut, and make a mark on each edge of my plywood. And this is where I wanna start the second cut. So this is gonna determine the finished length of the tabletop. So if you want something different, adjust accordingly. But regardless, remember that we need to place our guide three and a half inches over from that. So I'm gonna mark on each side and then clamp my straight edge guide to my workpiece. And if you wanna verify that you have it right, you can measure it where your clamp is, which for me would be 90 minus three and a half or 86 and a half inches. And once you're feeling confident, Make that cut. All right, so we can set the off cut aside for now and we're gonna come back to this later to attach it to our legs. But next, with our big chunk of remaining plywood, we're gonna to have to remove the factory edges on the long ends. So here I'm measuring and marking at just slightly over three and a half inches on each end, then clamping a long straight edge to those marks and making the cut. And by the way, I recommend not being like me in these shots and using some breathing protection. All right, the next thing we wanna do is rip three long strips at two inches wide and one long strip at three inches wide. So we're gonna start with the two inches. So to do that, I'm gonna to need to set up my edge guide at five and a half inches because two plus three and a half is five and a half. But a faster way to do this, rather than measuring it out each time, is to set a combination square to five and a half inches and use that to mark things up. So here I'm marking that out and then making the cut. And then I'm gonna repeat this process two more times to make two more 90 inch by two inch wide strips. And then I'll do this once more to make a strip that's 90 inches by three inches instead. So once you've finished doing that, you should have your tabletop, three two inch strips, one three inch strip, and this chunk that's about 48 by five and a half inches big. And here I'm just measuring what I have left over for my top, and it looks like it's gonna be 90 inches long and about 38 and a half inches wide. In this section, we're gonna cut and attach our four perimeter pieces to give the table the illusion of being an inch and a half thick rather than three quarters of an inch. So picking up where we left off, the first step is gonna be choosing which face of the top you wanna to be the top, and then flipping the whole thing upside down. Next, I'm gonna use glue and clamps to attach our two long pieces to the underside. And these are already the exact perfect length because of the order of operations that we used to get to this point. 
And if you don't have a ton of clamps, you could also use glue and a nail gun or screws. The only thing I'll warn you of is don't put them too close to the edge for now as you might accidentally expose them when we go to cut in our bevel in a few minutes. So with our two long pieces attached, I'm gonna take our third and final two inch wide strip and cross cut it roughly in half. So at this point they'd be about 45 inches long. Then I'm gonna hold them between the long pieces and mark exactly where we need to cut to get to the right length. And for this cut, you can make it any number of ways. You could use a circular saw with a speed square, like we did for the initial cut. You could use a miter saw if you have one. If you have a table saw, you could use a cross cut sled that you've made or something like this Rockler cross cut sled. You could also use a miter gauge on a table saw. Or you could use something like this Craig cross cut station. The point is you could use any number of tools to get the job done and I'll throw links to the tools that I showed here. But regardless of how you get there, after you do, go ahead and glue those on to each end, and let's let them dry. How do you want me to say it? Like, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. I like the first one. I don't know what I sounded like. <laughs> hey guys. Hey guys, before we move on to the next chapter, let's take a second to thank this video sponsor, Forby Parker. What's? So if you wear glasses like me, or my wife Dolores, or even sunglasses or contact lenses, you're gonna wanna hear this. And even though they're a sponsor, we've actually been wearing Warby Parker glasses and recommending them to friends since way before I ever made my first YouTube video. But before I tell you why, here's how it works. You go online, take a quick quiz, and they suggest a bunch of frames. Then you pick your five favorites and they'll send them to you at home to try on. Ships for free, there and back, and there's no obligation to buy. So there's literally nothing to lose. So this time around, since I just got a new pair of glasses, we decided to get Dolores a new pair. Here are her three favorites from the five that she picked. Let us know in the comments which you like. Anyway, and then after you've made your decision, glasses start at just $95, including the prescription lenses. And I'd like to say that it's this mix of convenience, quality, and value that got me to try and then ultimately stick with Warby Parker. It was actually Dolores who introduced me to them about 10 years ago, so, I guess I'll give her the honors of bringing this one home. Thank you. Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. So if you're in the market for any, I highly recommend checking them out. Just visit warbyparker.com slash four eyes to try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. Ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. So again, nothing to lose. Okay, thanks Warby Parker. Nailed it. Thank you. She didn't. Hey guys, before we... What was it? Before we get on to the next chapter. Yep. I know I mumble, so okay. I'm trying mumble. to not mumble. Let oh. yourself mumble. Is it Warby or Warby? I Warby, guess it probably doesn't matter. Warby, really. Warby. Warby Parker. All right, so I'm sure there's a better name than belly support stretchers for these pieces, but that's what I'm calling them, so whatever. And I guess the reason that I call them that is because they're kind of like a little pot belly on the underside of the table, or maybe a wing, wing support stretcher? I don't know. Anyway, at this point, the only pieces we have left are these two chunks, and in this chapter, we're gonna turn these chunks into our belly supports. Now this is probably the most complex shape that this table contains, other than, I guess, the legs, but you're not making those. So if you prefer to keep it simple, you could just leave them as rectangles. I don't personally think that looks as nice, but it's honestly not a huge difference maker since you can't really see these things from a standing height and or when the table's surrounded by chairs. So it doesn't matter that much. But in any case, the first thing that we're gonna do is cut this piece in half and then measure out 42 inches and cut each piece to that finished length. Now, if you do wanna make this belly wing shape, what you'll do is mark a line at the center and then mark a line an inch and a half down from the top on both ends and then connect the dots. 
Then I also marked a 45 degree angle on each end. But again, you can make any shape that you like because these angles are really just for looks. But whatever you do, once you have your shape marked out, probably the easiest or most approachable, well, approach, I guess, would be a jigsaw. And you'll just kind of cut to the line and then sand it to clean things up. If you happen to have a track saw though, that's a much faster and more accurate way to make these kind of cuts. So I'm gonna use my ACS to quickly make these shapes. Okay, let's set these aside and we'll come back to them in a bit. All right, so I started off by splitting this chunk into four pieces. So to start, my pieces were about five inches wide and 11 and a half inches long. That said, I ended up wanting thinner pieces, so after the fact, I ripped them to four inches wide. But whatever size they are, with those pieces in hand, start by making a mark down the center of the piece lengthwise then transfer that line across the ends of the pieces on both the front and the back of each piece. Then I'm gonna line the front edge of my leg up to the end of the plywood so that the center line is running down the center of the leg. And then I'm gonna attach these with two half inch screws for now. And these are just temporary and are gonna get replaced later. All right, so as you can see by the door opening and my different shoes and my different clothes, it's the next day now. So I'm going to start the day by getting a speed square and marking a 45 degree angle from the corner going towards the center. And we're going to do this on each corner of the table. Then I'm going to elongate that line by just using anything with a straight edge. Next, I'm going to take one of my legs and just kind of mess around with the placement to figure out exactly where I want this thing to live ultimately. And for me, this ended up being right at about 20 inches along each of my 45 degree marks that I made. Next, to figure out where to place our belly pieces, we're gonna start by marking a center line on the underside of each of the long pieces. And then I'm gonna mark a center line on each of my belly pieces. Then if I hold these marks up to one another, I can mark out the total span of the belly pieces on the underside of the table. Next, I'm gonna get a combination square and set it so that I'm making a mark about 10 inches in from the inside edge of the perimeter piece, and then mark a line exactly where I want my belly to be placed. I'll also transfer that center line towards the center of my tabletop so that I can line that up with my belly piece's center line to make sure that they're placed right in the center of the table. Not that it really would matter that much, but I like things centered, but anyway. With everything marked out, next I'm gonna grab my pocket hole jig and drill out spots for five screws along the length of each piece. And if you don't have a pocket hole jig, you could use regular screws that are countersunk or just glue, or honestly, you could get one. They're not that expensive and they're pretty handy, so I'm sure you'll use it for something else later. Okay, now let's set the legs and belly pieces aside, do some detail work, and then we'll get these again when it's time to attach everything. All right, so most of what we do in this chapter is optional. And again, there are a couple ways you can do it, but I'm gonna start by breaking any of the sharp edges that I'm not gonna route. So that would be the inside lip of the underside for me. Then I'm gonna sand the outside edges and I'm gonna go up to 180 grit for this. And I'm also gonna make sure that I slightly round over all four corners. So if you wanted to stop here and then just break the top and bottom edges, just like we did on the inside lip, you could do that. But I wanted to put a 45 degree chamfer on the bottom edge and a quarter inch roundover on the top edge. So we're gonna start with the chamfer bit, working our way around the table, taking several passes to get to our desired depth, which for me was about five eighths of an inch. Now, if you don't have a router and or you feel confident doing it, you could tilt the blade on your circular saw and use a straight edge to cut the bevel that way. But either way, again here, it's the next morning, I sanded my chamfer again, just removing any little burn marks and making sure that it felt nice to the touch. 
Then I could flip the whole table over so that it's right side up and then use my roundover bit along the top edges. Finally, regardless of what you did on the edges, we're gonna sand the entire top with 180 grit and then 220 grit sandpaper. So after doing that, we're gonna need to flip this thing back over to attach the legs. So I'm gonna use a moving blanket and just be extra careful, but if you don't have one, you could just wait until the very end to sand the top. We've already done most of the work when it comes to attaching the belly pieces. So really at this point, we just need to position them to our marks and then attach each with five screws. The legs are kind of similar. The only trick here is that we're gonna line up the marks that we had made on the center of the ends of our plywood spacers with the 45 degree marks that we made from our corners to ensure that the legs are at the proper angle. Then to attach them, we're gonna use one and a quarter inch long screws through the slots, through the spacers, and into the underside of the plywood. Now, in this video, I'm only putting two screws into each leg, but that's because these are the prototype legs, and I know I'm gonna swap them out for the real thing as soon as I get them. So here in this drawing, it shows how I might actually attach these. All right, so from here, you can just use whatever finish you like using the best, and then you're done. All right, well, let me be the first to congratulate you on a job well done. You've got a finished dining table. So I don't have a finished dining table yet, and that's because, as I said earlier, I'm still waiting to get my hands on the non-prototype version of the legs. So I'm hoping that here I'm able to add in some pictures of the real thing, but whether or not that happens, you should be able to see them and get more info directly from SemiExact. so I'll have links in the description. Okay, a few last things. At the top of the video, I mentioned that we have a PDF that you can download, which will have more information and dimensional drawings and guides. So there's a link for that in the description. And also, if you like this kind of content and want plans for some considerably longer and more complex builds, check those out on the site as well. I also mentioned at the top of the video that I worked with SemiExact to develop these legs. Now, in full disclosure, I'm not selling these legs or getting money directly from any sales of these legs. Semi-exact is selling them. That said, I did invest money in the company a few months back because I really like their philosophy and the direction that they're headed, and I wanted to be a part of it. And I was also excited about the idea of getting to develop things that I just couldn't really ever do on my own, like metal legs. So I guess the long story short there is that I don't want people to buy these legs because they want to support me. Really, I want them to live on their own strengths and their own merits. So I want people to buy them because they think that they're nice legs and they've got an idea for a project in mind, either this one or something else that they think the legs would be a good fit for. And really, if your goal was to support me, probably the best way to do that is through Patreon. So if you do do that, I'll send you a notebook and a shirt and some good vibes and we'll all be happier for it. And on that note, Quick thank you to all of my current Patreon members for helping me to make these videos possible. And for anybody considering, I'll throw a link in the description, so check it out. And as always, no pressure. All right, I'm gonna leave this one here and I'll see you in the next one.